Gandhiji's blood pressure was 200 by 120 all his life. And who was losing sleep? Sushila Nair. <laughs> Old man was sleeping nicely. And Gandhiji died of a very important complication of high blood pressure, bullet. <laughs> his kidneys were all right, his brain was all right, his heart was all right, his, his vessels were all right, because his mind was all right. He didn't hate nobody. It is if you hate somebody only you get disease. Did you know that? Hostility is the most important risk factor of heart attack and cancer. Anger is the cause of cerebral hemorrhage. Not eating cholesterol, dear sir. Actually, for cholesterol more the barrier. The more you have, the longer you live because you have very strong wall in the cell. So the, our problem is one size fits all. Everybody must be 120 by 80. And we call this as, in physiology, we call it as normal. Is there a definition of normal? This is average, average. There's a different, big difference between normal and average. I'll give you an example for the younger generation. Average Indian height is five, male height is 5.4 plus minus two inches. Gaussian curve, mean plus two, standard deviation, all the, the things that you write for all papers. Now imagine Amitabh Bachchan comes for a checkup. He's absolutely abnormal, 6.2. Our treatment is cut his leg, make him 5.6. <laughs> Don't laugh, that's what we are doing in hypertension and diabetes also. I can tell you, your first director here, I've been seeing him for 45 years. His blood pressure is always 90 by 40. So he'll come and say, Indi chaya. Indi chaya. I told him, don't, don't say anything, you'll be there forever. You will never die. This is, this, is the, this is the problem. So, Jaya Bachchan comes for a checkup. 4.6. She's the ideal candidate for transplanting that leg because she'll also become 5.6. This is exactly what you and I do in our science, my dear friends. You may laugh today, but go home and seriously think about it tonight. You will not get sleep. Hippocrates wrote, not today. Disease is not an entity, remember that? But a fluctuating condition of the patient's body, a battle between substance disease and the natural self-healing tendency of the body. What a fascinating 21st century definition of disease. Today we know the diseases that we teach our students, heart disease, lung disease, head disease, leg disease, has gone out of date and the treatment of that is either under treatment, over treatment, or mistreatment. You don't believe me because you know Indians, that too I'm from a village. I'll give you an American reference. Anybody pencil, pencil, pen? The end of the disease era. The article's name is End of the Diseased Era. The author is Mary Tinetti. Tinetti. T I N N E T T I. Young man is writing there. And of course, William Steed, her assistant, two of them wrote. They are from Yale, not from ordinary university, Yale University. And this is in the American Journal of Medicine, 2004. Somebody is writing. Write down, volume 116 and page 179. 179. She shows there that we have been killing people left, right, and center by treating them for these things, lowering somebody's blood pressure, doing some bypass surgery, doing some you know, angioplasty, that too, you know, blasting the endothelium. You are living here because of the endothelium. Endothelial relaxing factor, EDRF, nitric oxide. And you damage it, no EDRF. So only EDCF, it will contract. But who bothers? We are all lost in reductionist science. Statistical science and not a hard science what you and I are doing. Reductionist treats the human body as mechanical machine run by its electrobiochemistry. You talk to a biochemist, he thinks only biochemistry runs the whole world. Quick fix methods for damage control. Somebody's potassium is 4.3, 3.3, immediately you give potassium. Little do we know that what is called Transmutation, biological transmutation. If your body really needs potassium, it can convert sodium into potassium. Fascinating thing. It's called biological transmutation. A science which developed enormously in Russia 
but kept out of the American orbit because they didn't want this science because there is no business in it. Even today, we don't know how to treat a patient in the intensive care unit. Suppose he has lost blood. Point, point, drop by drop, you replace it, he'll die. Because there is what is called auto-transfusion and auto-infusion in the body, depending on the need. There are about 500 cc of blood in the pelvis. And when somebody meets with an accident and bottle of blood gone, that blood will get into the circulation. It gets pumped back. It is in that pool. This body, human body, if you are 60 kilograms body, you've got about 8 lakhs kilometers of capillaries. They hold so much of blood. We'll come to that later. 